Hello everyone, and welcome back to Full Throttle Remastered. So in the previous episode, Corley was murdered by Ripburger, and Ben was framed for the murder. We now find ourselves back at the kickstand. There is a roadblock preventing us from going any further. There is also a huge juggernaut here. So we're going to go inside and see if we can find the owner of said juggernaut. I can do that. Not gonna happen. Let me show you how to do that. Not gonna happen. Seem to have a lot of time on your hands. Not to mention nicks and scratches. <clears throat> Am I distracting you? That your truck out front? I need a ride. I look like a cabbie to you. Get lost. They're not letting anyone through that roadblock anyway. Not even truckers? They turned me around, said police business only. Pigs. Look, I really need a ride. Not gonna happen. Why? Because you're afraid of some cops? No, because I don't like you. I just killed a guy. I'm just about to. I don't think that's good for the table. Hey, Quahog. Yeah, Emmett? I'm gonna be knifing up your table for a while, all right? The customer with the knife is always right. Good talking to you. Friendly folks you get in here. Emmett's not what you'd call an I'm okay, you're okay person. Ah, shut your hole, Quahog. <laughs> Fair enough. So, if we go around for a bit of a nostalgia trip around the back of the kickstand to where we started the game. A familiar face. Ben, no time to talk. You know, it's stank in there, but I can't remember a better sleep. You gotta help me. Go find my editor in Corville. Tell him I took pictures of the Corley murder. You got pictures? Yeah, but some thug took my camera. So you don't have any pictures? Well, I tracked the guy to Melonweed, but I'm not going near the place. They'd kill me! Get my editor! He's gotta get me out of this! Take one of these fake IDs to get through the roadblocks! My career is riding on those pictures. Help me, Ben. You're my only hope. Oh, don't worry. I owe you one. If Miranda's thug is the same one that trashed Moe's place, that could be Miranda's camera I saw there. But then, who's got the film? Help me, Ben. You're my only hope. Love it. I mean, it's not quite Star Wars, but it is. Ben Kenobi, Obi-Wan, help me, Obi-Wan. Well, I'm pretty sure you got the reference. I don't need to explain it at length, do I? <laughs> uh, so with this fake ID, we can give this to... Uh... Emmett. Here. What's that? Fake federal investigator ID. Could be of some use at one of those roadblocks. Ever hear of this place? Uncle Pete's Mink Ranch. I remember there used to be some sort of weasel plantation or, or something up the road. Down Highway 9 on the other side of them damn roadblocks. I used to pick up mink meat there real cheap and sell it to school lunch programs. <laughs> that was a good scam. So how about a ride? What if they search the back and find my bike? It's buried in a pile of concentrated fertilizer powder. Trust me, no one's gonna dig through that crap. Now you're gonna ride in the engine compartment. The engine compartment? Hey, I smuggle stuff in there all the time, and most of it's worth more than you. So stuff your carcass in there quick, and we might hit that mink dump by morning. Hope you're better with a stick shift than you are with a knife. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Smells like he's got a fuel leak. I love engine fires. Sorry, sir. Only police vehicles be on this point. I'm with the feds, chump. Check it out. Huh? What's this about? 
Undercover agricultural sting operation. What's in the back? Fertilizer. All right, move along. Hope you rubes get your man. <laughs> hmm. We stopped moving. Problem with your truck? Yeah. <laughs> Loose hose, uh, nothing big. Uh, I, I already pulled your bike out. It's sitting right over there. Well, nice knowing you. Gotta hit the road, you know. Uh-oh. He did have a fuel leak, and he took my fuel line to fix it. That trucker's gonna die for what he did. Okay. So lots of things happened there. Kind of a problem with trying to let's play this game is that the cutscenes are so long. That's not a bad thing. Like this is, you know, it's just an incredibly absorbing single player game. So I can't blame it blame them for um making it unfriendly to let's players when it was uh, developed and released a full decade before let's playing even started. <laughs> anyway, we finally made it to Uncle Pete's Mink Ranch. We got the fuel line from Ben's bike stolen, so let's go and have a look inside here for a start. Uh, luckily this section, that this puzzle, is possibly the easiest in the entire game. If we just move the pillow, there is a tire iron underneath which we will take, and that becomes uh, quite a useful item in the game. Use that on the locked trunk here. junk and a hose I can use on my bike. I don't think Mo would mind if I borrow him. Mo? Booster fuel. Uh, why is she running from me? She must think the whole world's against her. I think I know how that feels. That does it. He's dead. That sign. That means I'm in cavefish territory. is worthless. We have been tricked, my brothers. Back to the cave. Hmm. The place looks deserted. Maybe the boss was wrong and she ain't coming here. She's coming. We just got here first. 
That means all we have to do is sit here and wait. That was awesome. So those cave fish guys, they're like the rival gang. And I've got to talk about the visual design of them because for me, the design of the actual characters looks like some halfway split between Tusken Raiders from Star Wars and Buzzards from Mad Max Fury Road, although obviously that came out much later than this. And the bikes look like uh, some sort of direct split of the Tron light cycles, the bikes from Akira, and the bikes from Biker Mice from Mars, and they look extremely unsafe and bizarre retro sci-fi. And they are incredibly awesome, and I love them. So, this is all that remains of Emmett and his truck. Uh, but he was a dick. Anyway, we use the tire iron on the wheels here. Well, that's all of them. Can't be much holding that up now. The truck has them pinned. Nice. So... Next, I think we go back this way. I'm trying to remember how this works. So we have to wait until the right exit before we can exit this road. Mine road. Mink, we're looking for Mink Branch, right? Here we go. <laughs> Look at him run. So I think I I think what happened here is I forgot to uh, pick up fertilizer from the truck. I think that's right. I'm trying to remember how this puzzle works. Here we go. Ah! Watch it. Do that means I lose him? way back. This isn't going to put me back at the Mink Ranch, is it? Oh, okay. Well, this sucks. I guess we'll go on the mine road. So this is how the game sort of becomes open. This is cool as well. This looks really cool. It's sort of like Star Wars Rebel Assault. And here's an old friend. Father Tor. I haven't seen you since you retired from the Polecats. Hey, Ben. How's my gang doing? Uh, that's a long story. What are you doing out here? Well, retirement's pretty boring, Ben. So I thought I'd come out to the old mine road and look for trouble. You're picking fights? That's what the old mine road's for, son. Father Tork, I need your help. The gang's in jail and the law... Ben, I'm not the leader of the Polecats anymore. You are. Can't you see I'm on permanent vacation? Any fighting tips, Tork? Ah, Ben, who's tougher than you? Nobody, but those rod wheelers are uglier. They're none too bright either. I'm sure you can handle them. The vultures are quick, and they're nuts. The ones with those boosters are hard to whip. Just remember, Ben, it's not about muscle, 
It's about timing. What's up with those cavefish, man? Watch out, Ben. They're not out here for sport. They hijack big rigs. It's part of their religion. Don't get in their way. They're blind, cold-hearted killers. How do the cavefish ride if they're blind? Well, they're only blind because they wear those special goggles to shield their sensitive cave-dwelling eyes. Special sensors in the goggles pick up the dots in the road and other large objects and landmarks to help them navigate. <laughs> Kinda trippy, huh? You know any way around Puyahoga Gorge? Around it? <laughs> it's miles and miles long, Ben. What's the matter? Don't like bridges? It blew up. Ooh, sorry I missed that. Well, you could jump it, like Ricky Myron. Cavefish got his ramp in their hideout, you know. Where is the cavefish hideout exactly? Somewhere on this road. The entrance is totally invisible unless you got those weird cavefish specks. Can't talk anymore, Ben. Eating too many bugs. Well, take it easy, Father. Give him hell, Polecat. I like him. He's kind of a Ben Kenobi. So, this is where we start fighting dudes. And all, it, all of the information that we were given then is kind of... We'll just get to the tie right. Hit him then. Hit the guy. Oh dear. Okay, um, so... There are various... Uh, different members of different gangs and they all have various sorts of um, like various kind of attributes which make them different to fight and I'll have to remember which ones they are but you can collect weapons from them as well you like choppers huh and uh, she has a chainsaw which almost can one shot people I really want that one um, but probably gonna lose this right now for some reason, he really doesn't want to attack. Uh, there's, let me see, there's the, so there's the tire iron which we have, there's the bike chain, there's the fist and the boot, there's the chainsaw, and uh, then there are the vultures who, yeah, that didn't go well. Okay. I feel like we should finish the other puzzle before we do this really, but, so we'll take the exit, but then we'll come back to this. And there is also a way of you can just skip the combat if this is anything like the original. And so far it's identical to the original. But when I used to play this back in the 90s, I always thought that the, this part was like the, the most badass part of it. And now I seem to really suck. So, let's take the exit. We need to kill a cave fish to get the specs. We need to kill a vulture to get the jet boosters. And we need to... Um, collect some weapons as well. So I will give that another try in a moment. I think we need to take some of this fertilizer. Maybe I'll just take a little. And then can we use this? No more lug nuts. Okay, I think it doesn't let you do this until you've taken the fertilizer. That's what we wanted. He's a pretty strong dude. And as you can see, this is going to make it quite difficult for um, Ritberger's henchmen what a to, mess. <laughs> to chase old Ben over here. So you can see where this is going, right? And this is where a lot of the puzzles in Full Throttle end up going. Something where you are sort of doing a looping, um, a looping kind of linear set of events and you have to disrupt one or two things and then like, loop it again and see what changes. So in this case, we are going to go all the way to the end, back to the mink branch, and uh, 
get the attention of Ritberger's henchmen again and lead them past the crashed fertilizer truck. Like so. <laughs> Look at him run. I'm pretty sure that guy's voice actor is Maurice LaMarche, isn't it? The guy from Future Armor and stuff. It very much sounds like him anyway. Um, so, this should cause something different to happen right now. So we'll stay where we are. Here we go. Ah! Yep, and here's Rip Burger himself. It was Nestor's fault. Get in quick. I have a plan. We're going to lure the Corley remnant out of hiding with a bike. Boss, she already has a bike. Yes, but this one she worked on with her father. It's an emotional thing. Don't try to understand. Now hurry. <laughs> you can sort of see how he went from doing that voice to doing the voice of Joker in the uh, Batman animated and Batman Arkham games and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, the way he sort of goes, Don't try to understand. There's like a really kind of crazy, there's that very distinctive Joker thing that Mark Hamill does. It starts to come through in some of Rick Burger's voice acting, uh, like dialogue lines and stuff. So what we're doing now is going right the way back to where the fertilizer truck was. And here's the remains of the car, and we use the tire iron on it. We get one of the things that we need. Which is... the hovering mechanism. So we can fit that onto Ben's bike. Looks okay for an aftermarket part. That's the spirit, Ben. So, that's one of the things that we need to be able to jump the Poyahoga Gorge, or whatever it was called. I can't remember the name of it. If we go back to the other end, in fact, we should be. I think we can look at a sign, and, and he does like list the items that we need to complete this, this current objective here. Zip up there right now. Let's examine this. Here we go. Professor Schmetterling's experimental flying suit. One of the gorge's many casualties. Ricky Myron's infamous gorge jump. This is the last picture ever taken of Professor Schmetterling. Notice. Jumping the Poyahoga Gorge, although tempting, is highly illegal and dangerous. We recommend the recently constructed Poyahoga Gorge Bridge for transgorge travel. Drive safely. Tightrope walkers, hang gliders, human cannonballs. Many have tried to cross the mighty Poyahoga Gorge, and many have failed. Except for Ricky Myron, the Flying Torch who jumped the gorge on a stock Corley motorcycle. It was later uncovered that he had modified his Corley with a pre-regulation destroyer class solid fuel recoil booster and an automotive hover lift. Myron said he would gladly replicate the jump to clear his name, but his special ramp was stolen by a mysterious truck hijacking motorcycle gang. Hmm. Recoil booster and a hover lift, eh? Thanks for the tip, Rick. You're right, though. I'll need that ramp. 
there we go. So we have the hover lift. We just need the booster and the ramp. And then we can do this shit. And I remember when this game first came out. Um, before we had it. In my house we had a playable demo of it. And it included... It started off in when you're in the dumpster in the kickstand and stuff, and then it, uh, it cut to this part. And I remember going, um, driving around on the bike and fighting the guys and going and getting the ramp from the cave fish cave and putting the ramp on here and doing the jump, and that's where the demo ended. So it was kind of a sort of a best of collection, like almost a, just a playable trailer. And I just had a, a bit of a brainwave, and I remembered that because we picked up this fertilizer. We can use that in the bicycle combat to um, make it really, really much easier. I think it ends it almost immediately if you do that, if memory serves correctly. So if we can get the um, get back to that punk girl with the chainsaw, I should have taken that exit, shouldn't I? Well, shit. This one is dead. Uh, if I can get back to the punk girl with the chainsaw. We should be able to give that a try. The chainsaw is the weapon we really want to have. And this guy is just a generic fucker, so we'll we'll just probably fight him and probably lose as well. Let's see how we do. Switch the weapon. Yeah, so we can That's switch the fertilizer. Good. But I'm not going to waste it on him. Listen's over. Time for the final exam. <laughs> Are you supposed to be British or Australian? Because either way, your voice acting kind of sucks, but... Uh, wow, that went that I guess it was the final exam. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be... He's sort of like a Cockney Hells Angel, but at the same time, I don't know if he's supposed to be like an Australian, sort of from the Road Warrior or something. Uh, I don't know. Hello, this is a uh, cavefish. So I guess... I could... Try attack. Can't reach. What? Okay. Well, this is humiliating. Right, we're gonna go for the girl, the punk girl, who looks like Razor from Maniac Mansion. Because once we've got the chainsaw, that makes the rest of the combat quite a bit easier. And I think, if I remember rightly. Now I'm mad. Yeah, you can. <laughs> okay, so that's badass. That was very badass. Uh, you can press Shift and Shift and V to just win the fight, which is like pressing zero in the fist fighting in Fate of Atlantis. It's sort of like um, the fact that it's a graphic adventure. Oh, I got the ball and chain. No, you son of a bitch. Yeah, that's a quicker weapon. Plan bike. Thank you. I got the plank. Plank him. So, who's next? Come on then. Oh, that's weird. So is this like... Okay, so next is the... The cave fish again. So I guess we need to be trying to do this guy. Ball and chain seems quite good. Can't reach. Okay. I'm trying to remember how we do that, but... Because his bike is too low, maybe we could throw the fertilizer? Again, this is like... Um, not terribly good for the from the point of view of a walkthrough, but from the point of view of a let's play, it's at least vaguely interesting to watch, I imagine. Is this the punk girl, finally? No, it's not. It's a different guy. Aggressive little war. It's kind of like the, um... A bit like the random pirates in the Secret of Monkey Island who you have to insult sword fight with. I got nothing from that guy, except a slight inflation of my ego. We're on 29 minutes. Yeah, I'll do a couple more and then... <clears throat> Call it a day, and we'll carry on next time. Okay, there's the chain. Wow, are you really a <laughs> skanky <gasps> pulp? <pumpkin. laughs> okay. <laughs> the chain. It's so annoying how I came across that girl like second time last time before I had the weapon to get her with. Say there. 
Is that a pre-regulation destroyer class solid fuel recoil booster you have there? Why, yes it is. Ta-ta! <coughs> you dick. Okay, yeah, so that's the vulture guy. He has the booster we need. And uh, so obviously, he just boosts away. What does this girl do? Okay. <laughs> she just dies very quickly, apparently. We seem to have some pretty good weapons now. Um, let me see. Yeah. <laughs> right, so we have to get him really quickly. Oops, <laughs> that's not the way to do it. The cave fish, um, the cave fish trips you up if you get too close, so you have to use a weapon with good range and stay a distance away. So we could try the, the chain, I think, possibly. Can't reach. Can't reach. Can't reach. No. Born chain? No, that's no good. Oh dear. Yeah, his bike is like... The sort of gimmick of his bike is that he trips you up. Um, if you get next to him. So you need to find the weapon with the range. So this one... Hey, it's... Glad to see you all. Whoa. Okay. So that was, uh, pretty much a one-shot. I am enjoying this immensely. <laughs> I do. I know I do need to end the episode right now, but gotta run. <laughs> gotta run. How do I get him? Um. <laughs> Demoralizing. I'm. Sh I remember it being the chain or the chainsaw. The chainsaw is kind of a really awesome weapon to have. This one. We'll try the board. Ah, that's got a bit of a range. There we go. Does that give us the goggles? Yes. Chain, probably. Getting quick. Come on, Ben. Hey. You drop anchor or something? That should have a couple of good boosts left in it. Nice. We can equip the goggles. And that will show us the location of the cavefish's base. Presumably. So that got us pretty much everything we need in the space of like one minute. Which is a shame because I was really enjoying brainlessly beating up guys and I still didn't get the fucking chainsaw, did I? We also have to deal with the cat's eyes on the rope, but that's part of the next puzzle. Ah, oh, that was the highway exit. Oh shit. Okay. So, I am going to end this episode here before it gets too much longer. In the next episode, we will go into the cavefish's cave and see if we can get hold of that ramp. And then we should have everything we need to jump the gorge. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Full Throttle Remastered, and I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to show your support, the best thing to do is to hit like and subscribe for more, and leave me a comment, and I will see you next time. Take care, guys, and goodbye.